All right, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining the Darien Library. I'd like to thank the friends of the Darien Library for making these pro programs possible and for our partners at Barrett Bookstore, where you can find these titles. Please type any questions you have into the Q&A box, and we will get to them at the end of the program. Let me tell you a little bit about both authors. Gina Hamaday, author of I Want... Oh, wait a second. Sorry, guys. I have a typo here. Gina Hamaday, author of, it, author of I Want to Thank You, is a writer and editor whose work has been, appeared in O, oh, The Oprah Magazine, Food and Wine, Rachel Ray Every Day, Women's Health, and other publications. She lives in Brooklyn with her husband and her two adorable sons. AJ Jacobs is an author, journalist, lecturer, and human guinea pig. He has written four New York Times bestsellers that combine, me that combine memoir, science, humor, and a dash of self-help. Among his books are The Know-It-All, The Year of Living Biblically, and My Life as an Experiment, and his latest Thanks a Thousand. He is a contributor to NPR, The New York Times, and Esquire, among others. He has given several TED Talks that have amassed over 10 million views. With that, we will take it away and give me one minute to just foots around on my screen here so that I can get something off and we'll be ready to go. Hello, everyone. Thanks for waiting for us. Um, before, we, this will be a panel discussion, so I'd love you just to jump in whenever you want. But the first question, let's start with Gina and then we'll um, have AJ follow up. And for those guests who, tonight who have not read your wonderful books, could you give them a little brief description? Sure. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, so my book, I Want to Thank You, uh, is about the year that I spent sending out 365 gratitude notes. And I divided the year into 12 topic. So every month I focused on a different group of recipients. So I wrote to uh, neighbors, friends, mentors, authors, and so on and so forth. Um, and the book is about that year and all the benefits I was feeling and the lessons I learned and um, kind of how it impacted, impacted me and how this little small experiment made this big impact. Thank you. And AJ, let's hear a little bit about your book. Sure. Uh, well, first, thank you to the Darien Library uh, and thank you to Gina. I'm a huge fan of your book. It's awesome. Oh. So, uh, I'm thank delighted. you. And thank you to you for blurbing it. AJ actually was oh, nice pleasure. enough to write about, about it. It's right on the I back. And by every adjective <laughs> and every adverb in that blurb. Yeah. So uh, yeah. And, and of course, thank you to Steve Wozniak for inventing the, uh, the home computer so I could do this. Yes, uh, so. There you go. Uh, Very on brand. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I feel it's my job. Uh, my book is called Thanks a Thousand, and uh, it's about, uh, I, I knew the importance of gratitude, but I don't think I'm naturally a very grateful person. I'm more uh, sort of Larry David than Mr. Rogers, but I thought that it was important to try to become more grateful. So at the suggestion of my son, I uh, spent several months trying to thank every single person who had anything to do with my morning cup of coffee. So I thanked the barista, but I also went to South America and I thanked the farmer who grew the beans. But I, uh, and I also thanked everyone in between, which is hundreds, maybe thousands of people. The, the man who drove the truck with the beans to the coffee shop, the the person, he couldn't have done his job without the road, so the person who made the road, and on and on, uh, and I reached a thousand uh, people, hence the title, uh, Thanks a Thousand. That's excellent. Let me just, um, Gina, this one's for you. Mm -hmm. uh, you break your book into themes. Could you speak to that and tell us how you came up with them and which one was the most impactful? Sure. So maybe I'll start with um, explaining how I came up with the idea because that in that I, I sort of had this brainstorm and that's when I came up with the themes as well. So I had this stack of thank you notes to write to donors of a fundraiser and I started writing them in January, 2018. And I 
was writing them on the train. I was commuting at the time to New Jersey and I, it was just one other thing on the list. It wasn't something I was, I'm meeting these people now that are big, thank you, no people and God bless them, but I was never one of them. Um, but I just, you know, just put my phone down with all of the, you know, to-do lists and the feeds and everything. And I turned to these thank you notes and I started writing these people who donated and, you know, I noticed day after day, I sort of slowly noticed that it was a really good feeling to start my day with that, with that practice. And when it was done, when I finished my stack, it was January 31st. And I was thinking about how much I liked it and how surprising it was and how good it felt. And I looked at the list and I'd written 31 notes. So the idea kind of came to me in this little neatly wrapped package. And I thought, okay, you know, if I want to do this, if this was a positive thing for me and I want to invite more of this into my life, you know, I know myself. And if that's just like a vague intention, I'll never do it. And, you know, both AJ and I came up in magazines. So it's like, I saw this very much like a, you know, I, I saw it sort of like a content calendar. Um, you know, I knew I had to put some structure behind it if I wanted to actually do it. So that's where I came up with all right. So I just did January. That theme was charity. So what would February be? What would March? And, you know, once, once I, I had those themes, then it became a doable project because then I could think, okay, mentors like, all right, I could start thinking about that list right now. And then I would just have to, you know, flesh it out and, you know, how, what would I write? Um, so that is the story behind, you know, why the themes. And then as far as which were the most impactful, um, it's hard hard to really say, but when, when you asked that, the, the three that came to mind were my friends, um, my friends chapter slash month, which I'll go into a little bit later. I think if I'm, I'm looking at the questions right now, but, um, but reaching out to friends that I hadn't seen in a while was, was just, I don't know, lovely and pleasant. Um, and, and re writing to authors, I thought that would be really boring because it was like fan mail and I've, I've never written fan mail in my life, but that got me back into reading in a way that I, I had little kids at the time, really little kids and I'm still reading. I've always been a reader, but um, I don't know, it just reconnected me to that part of my life um, in a way that I think I needed it at that time. And then, um, and then the last chapter was to my husband and I wrote him a note every day of the month. And that was like a really interesting sociological experiment and it changed the way we talk to each other. And it's just fascinating. So those are the three that come to mind. Great. AJ, your structure is a little different. Would you talk a little bit about it? Sure. It was, um, as I said, I tried to thank a thousand people and, and it just reminded me how many humans it takes to make anything happen in our lives. So it doesn't have to be coffee, it could be uh, a pencil and a pair of socks. Uh, so I broke it down a little into different categories. So for instance, I, uh, I thanked all the people involved in transportation and you can't believe, you know, there was boats and planes and shoulders and donkeys, you know, I, I, I didn't actually thank the donkey too, uh, but uh, you know, I'd like to thank him or her now. Uh, and uh, so I did that, but I also, um, I had a section on the cup because I couldn't have drunk my coffee without the cup. And one of my favorite interviews was with the guy who designed the lid for the coffee cup because I couldn't believe how much passion and thought and, uh, went into this little plastic thing on top of my my I mean he was he could have talked for hours he I was on for like two hours and I was like <laughs> all right I think I got, got it but uh he could have gone because you know he talked to the smell of the coffee is a huge part of the experience so he made the the, the hole wider so that more of the aroma could come out and he made a, a uh, an indentation in the lid so that you could really get your nose in there to really so just the it made me realize everything around us there's so much thought that goes into it that uh that we take for granted and uh and now when i look at something like you know the 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 switch on my 
lamp, the desk lamp I have, has a nice little indentation for my thumb. And I never noticed that, but you know what? That That's very nice. Thank you to the person who in, did the little thumb indentation on my switch. That's great. Um, you both speak about the psychology of paying it forward. Could you elaborate on that topic when we go back to Jenna? Um, yeah, what came to mind when, when I read this question was um, in my travel month, I one of the people I wrote to was my friend Allison in Seattle. And years back, I had she had put up my family and I for a weekend. And I wrote to her about just thanking her for that. And she told me later that she that inspired her to do the same thing for somebody that she had, you know, stayed, stayed at their house a couple of years prior. Um, so yeah, I mean, what also comes to mind is like, a lot of people ask me about the replies and the responses. That's like one of the most common questions is, um, you know, oh, how do people respond? And were people like, did you get like all these amazing responses? And like, you know, the answer is yes, but I was really specific in the beginning of the process to not track it and not ever, like once I sent them, once they went in the mailbox, I really, not that I never thought about them again, but I was not waiting for a reply um, for a lot of reasons, but that to me felt really important to think of them like gifts. Um, and so I guess connecting that to paying it forward, um, you know, that is like, I feel like that's a really important piece of this, of gratitude is like that it's, that you don't wait for it to, I don't know, you don't like, I think it's important to not want or expect like a, um, I don't know, gratitude back, you know, it's like, it's, it's just a gift and you, it's, there's so much that you get out of giving that gift. Um, and then the hope is that it, that people pay it forward and they, and they do, you know, um, I don't know if that makes and I, sense. I, speaking of responses, it's been a while since I read your, your wonderful book, but can you remind me, what, what did your husband, did he write you thank you notes back or he just uh, was happy? He, he, he was like, he wrote me one really beautiful thank you note at the end um, that was, that's really special to me. Um, but he just was giving it, giving that gratitude back to me verbally and just in like these little small ways. And it really, we really have kept that up in the sense, you know, in like the, like, oh, thanks for taking the garbage out. And, you know, obviously with two, with a part, with, you know, with a partner, obviously you took the trash out the other day. So you could think to yourself, like, why would I thank him for taking the garbage out? I just took the garbage out two days ago and whatever I did it. Now he does it. Who cares? Why say it? But it's like, it's such a nice change to just say it, just say it. There's nothing, yeah. you're not losing anything. You're not, it's free, you know? And it just like, it lubricates everything. <laughs> yeah. And as for me, the paying it forward, uh, I do think that one of the best parts about gratitude is it's sort of like a, a virtuous circle, which is, you know, the opposite of a vicious circle. So uh, when I would call someone who maybe didn't expect, I uh, called the woman who did pest control for the warehouse where my coffee beans have, were stored. And I said, I know this is a little strange, but I, I want to thank you for keeping the insects out of my coffee. And she said, well, that is weird, but but thank you. You know, I don't forget any any recognition. This is a this is a thankless job, uh, and thank you for making my day, which in turn made my day. Uh, so there's where the the two way street, uh, the the virtuous circle comes in. AJ, will you talk a little bit about that experiment you um, wrote about, where what happens when someone actually um, does see gratitude and what it does to them in terms of their behavior or someone who sure I can't remember the exact uh, uh, experiment uh, you're referring to but it is certainly you know it's incredibly powerful and uh, it changes your perspective uh, 
because I think a lot of us have a, a deficit mindset. So we're very, at least I, I do, that's my default. I'm very good at saying, you know, what I need, what I'm missing, what, uh, what will make me happy. If I just get X, that's going to make me happy. And of course you get X and you're like, oh, I need Y. I need why then I'll be happy. So gratitude is a lot about trying to get over the deficit mindset and reverse it and, and get out of this negative bias and focus on the, the amazing things that we do have and the hundreds of things that go right every day. Uh, you know, it's easy to, to notice the three or four that go wrong, but even something like this, just the fact that I had a little trouble, as you noticed, getting on and my microphone wasn't working, but now it is. And it's, you know, that's pretty astounding that uh, I'm able to sit here in my apartment and communicate with you. That's great. Um, this is for both of you. What was the most surprising or difficult part of this gratitude project for each of you? Jean, Jean and why don't we start with you? So the most difficult part was what I call in the book, the squirmy feeling when you, when I was, you know, writing to somebody that, you know, some, some letters were really easy to write, you know, writing to my neighbor who I see a lot, like, oh my God, you were so nice, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Like, that's easy. That's easy to deliver. It's easy to write. Some of them were harder, you know, writing to somebody that you haven't seen in 10 years and telling them that you still think about them is like a, you know, it's pretty much the least cool thing you could do. And it's, you know, hard. It's, it takes bravery. It's like a, um, somebody called it a, they're like, oh, I couldn't do that. So I, it's like way too, I'd feel way too squirmy. I'm like, yeah, that's how I feel constant. That's how I felt all year long, like constantly, like, um, and that's even just the ones that were slightly awkward. There were some letters I wrote to the boss who laid me off. I wrote to a friend who I was estranged to, like, you know, so some of them were really hard. Um, and those for sure were the most rewarding and the most impactful as far as, um, you know, as far as processing feelings that I was having about those relationships and also repairing them. Um, yeah, so that's where I'll leave that. What about you, AJ? Well, I agree with Gina. Yeah, you know, sometimes it, it, it uh, I said awkward, but squirmy is a better word. Uh, sometimes you would be thanking people and, you know, it, it's not necessarily natural. You're going above and beyond and people, some people were actually very skeptical. They would like, you know, I'd call and I'd thank him for the ladder that was in the coffee shop so that the, the barista could reach my coffee and they, you know, they'd be like, what's going on? Is this the pyramids? <laughs> what are you trying to sell me? But I would say that was a minority. The, the vast majority were, were very thankful to be thanked because we, I do believe we are, we underthank in this country or in this world. Uh, so that was difficult. And then, uh, then trying to narrow it down because, you know, I could go on and on for for I could get to a million people probably just uh, because one person leads to another. Uh, so going, you know, I, I, I did have to travel. So uh, I went to Colombia and thanked the farmers who grew the beans. And, um, and they, so, so they actually, they were a little freaked out in the beginning, but then, you know, I spent several hours with them. And by the end, they, they had actually glommed onto the idea. And they said, you know, we, we couldn't do our job without the uh, the pickup truck that was, you know, made in America and Japan, and we couldn't do this without that. So wherever you go, it's like the six degrees of, of uh, separation. It's the whole Kevin Bacon thing. Everyone is connected. Um, okay, you both speak about thank you and I'm grateful. Can you tell us what you think the difference is between one phrase or the other? Or is there a difference? I mean, for me, it's like one is a feeling and one is an action, right? Which I feel like we both, both of us are, it's the expressing gratitude I feel like is the key, at least, you know, I, there's, you start with feeling gratitude and that is great, but it's often a passing fleeting thought. And then when you express it, 
you know, first of all, you're putting words to the, the passing lovely positive thought, and then also you're sharing it with, um, you know, with the person responsible. So I feel like, you know, I'm grateful is something that you, a place, a positive, warm place where you want to live, um, you know, when you can, and then thank you is that next step. That's a lot of people don't take and not enough of us take enough of the time. I like that framing. Uh, I actually, um, I talk about it because there was a study by Wharton, the uh, business school, that uh, when people wrote thank you notes and used the phrase, I'm grateful, they actually got a, a bigger response in terms of callbacks to oh, interviews, et cetera. And uh, I don't think it's anything magic about the words I'm grateful, but I think it's partly that it, it mixes it up. And mm. that, that is to me important because just saying thank you can be almost uh, reflexive. And, mm. uh, and if you can say it in any other way, it just shows you put thought into it and, and making it specific, you know, thanking, you know, saying, you know, thanking the barista and saying, uh, you know, thanks for staying on your feet all day or, or whatever, just making it more targeted and mixing it up instead of just a, uh, uh, a reflexive two-word phrase. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. I like yeah, that. that is interesting. Here's something that kind of tags along to that. Um, do you think there's a difference between a virtual thank you, a written thank you, and a live thank you? I'd love to hear your response on this because you did, you, it sounds like you did all of, right? Didn't you sort of do? Yeah, I mean, you know, I do think that face-to-face -face is always a little better, but I'm I'm not a snob. I think all of them are great. And um, my mom and I, who may be on, may be one of the participants, uh, we, every morning we email each other one thing that we're grateful for, a little thing. Yeah, and, that's uh, so cute. Yeah, thank you. I think so. Uh, and, uh, and I do love the handwritten, which I know Gina talks about in, in her book. Uh, and for my book, actually, as part of the marketing, it, I promised to do 1,000 handwritten notes to readers of my wow. book. Jeez, so that, yeah, that, that was a big, uh, yeah, that's a huge Oh, it was a thing. terrible idea in some ways. <laughs> in other ways, yeah. it, it was awesome. Yeah, no, but a thousand, really, that's, I mean, yeah, that's a lot. Five, my hands were, you know. Cramping. It took me a year and a half, yeah. And there was some carpal tunnel going yeah. on. But uh, but like you talk about in your book, uh, Gina, that, I, you know, I would get, I would start out being annoyed that I had to do this. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but by the end, I would, even during the act of writing it would, uh, you know, you'd get dopamine flowing, you get yeah. that warm glow. And uh, so forcing myself to do it, and then starting to enjoy it. That's yeah. great. That must have been a, a sore hand by the end of the year, the year and a half. It was. Um, let's see. Uh, I think Jen, Jen, is, Jen has already talked about this, but would you both speak a bit about how you choose who you thank? And I think, Gina, Gina you talked about it a little bit in your themes. Right. Yeah. I, I just, yeah, for me, it was just key to put some structure behind it um, in that way. And I still think about it, even though I'm not in that, what I called my thank you year, I still think about it in that way, like little you know, with my book coming out, it was like, I start with a list, you know, who helped in this way. Um, I come back from a vacation, write a little list. It's, um, it just helps me to put that structure behind it. Um, that, that kind of helps me get it done. Yeah. And for me, uh, I would ask everyone I thanked, you know, who helped you? Who, how, who are you thankful for? So, uh, the barista told me uh, the, uh, the guy at uh, the coffee shop who actually goes and buys the beans and goes around the world. Uh, and, um, and as I said, you know, I, I stopped at a thousand, but conceivably I could have just gone on uh, if you forever, forever, because, uh, yeah. you know, there's the truck driver. I interviewed him and he said he stays awake by listening to, Beyonce. So I actually did reach out to Beyonce's people and to thank her for my for her role in my coffee. And I'm yet to hear a response from her, but uh, I'm sure it's coming. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> yeah, in the form of a song. Um, let's talk a little bit about gratitude and the effect it has on your health. 
Why don't we start with AJ? Uh, well, there's there's a lot of scientific evidence that it is uh, that it has real physical effect, not just mental health, uh, but also that it helps you recover more quickly from illness and um, and even makes you more generous and helps you sleep better. So it is uh, it is pretty remarkable. Um, and of course, you know, to me, the, the mental health benefits are, are huge. What do you think, Gina? Yeah, no, that's uh, you, exactly. I, that's exactly what I was talking about in my book, all those things. It's, um, yeah, it's like all the pop psychologists are like, yep, guys, this is it. This is a magic sauce. I mean, it's all <laughs> these, you know, all these reasons. Um, yeah, even um, if even if only half of what the pop psychology right. says right. is true, which is pretty probably, good. Yeah, that is still amazing. Yeah, you know mm -hmm. that. Uh, and I and I am skeptical of a lot of these social scientific studies uh, uh, nowadays. But um, uh, not the vaccine ones. Very pro vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. I, but. Uh, <laughs> But I am skeptical of some of, you know, the, the unreplicated ones. Uh, but even, as I say, even if those are only 50% true, it's still an amazing, uh, yeah. almost, uh, it's like a drug. Yeah, it's like the most powerful tool we have to help ourselves feel better in lots of ways. Would one of you address the um, dopamine effect? Would you explain that to the audience? Dina, I mean, you are a doctor, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just basically, you know, I talked to a couple brain scientists about this. And when I start, like, <laughs> I, I voiced my audio book. And when I get to that part, it's like, I realize how I cannot say any of the, any of the brain words. I'm not, I'm incapable of saying any of them. Um, but anyway, it's basically, you know, it's the same the same little pleasure centers light up when you are feeling this warm, positive gratitude, thinking about your child or thinking about something your mother did for you. It's the same, you know, it's, it's the pleasure centers are, you know, it's, there's lots of things that, that light them up, but that one definitely does it, you know? Um, and I, they talk about the uh, sort of the warm glow feeling you get mm -hmm. from doing good, which is, I think one of the greatest things evolution has done for us has given us this warm glow when we help others. And so, uh, you know, one of the best ways to deal with when you're when you're sad or gloomy or depressed is to try to get outside of your own head and help others. And I just think it's a wonderful um, uh, mechanism that evolution has d designed that we we feel better when we help others. Uh, so I'm very thankful for that. Me too. It's something I've been thinking about a lot as far as like, you know, self, self-care, self-care in the last few years and just like, you know, contributing to your community, like doing something for your community. I feel like not to say that I don't want to like whatever bubble bath, whatever, but like it just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a, it's a more, it's, it's just a, a, a a more definite way to feel better is to get mm -hmm. outside of yourself and connect with somebody in that way or help somebody in that way. Yeah, I like that. So yeah, other care is sometimes self-care because it makes yeah. you feel better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Jenna, I have another one for you. It says, talk, would you please talk a little bit about weak ties, strong ties, waving first? The whole thing. Touch, and whole touch thing. on your touch on the um, neighbor interaction. Yeah. So that my neighbor chapter was my first, um, or my neighbor month was my first month after the accidental charity month. So I, um, right away turned to neighbors and, you know, started writing to, <clears throat> uh, my local book owners of my local bookstore, the local, what we call the mozzarella store, um, coffee shop, you know, all, all those places and the people who live nearby and everybody who did me or my family a favor. And as I'm writing to those people, um, there were just so many, so many wonderful things about that month. But first of all, I, you know, would learn, I didn't know all their names. It would be one of those, like the friendly face. And then you, um, actually, <laughs> this is funny. Um, 
in that month, I thanked um, the the farmer's market guys, our favorite farmer's market stand guys. And I didn't know their names. They were so friendly. They're always so friendly to us, but I didn't know their name. It was just like a high thing. And so I, you know, Nermeen was the main guy's name and I had to spell it. So I like wrote it in my, um, in my little app, whatever my notes app. Um, and so first of all, learning his name and then he learned my name, you know, and then thanking him for this exchange that we have every week. It just like deepened these relationships that, you know, I was doing a lot of thinking about, you know, what are these relationships and why are, do they make me feel so good, you know, every day. And I interviewed um, this woman, Jillian, who did a bunch of research about weak ties and strong ties, which are weak ties are basically acquaintances. And, you know, we got on the phone and had this wonderful conversation about, you know, it just reminded me so much about what's good about New York. Um, but basically, you know, the weak ties don't give you everything you need. She gave me like the list of five things that social interactions give you. And weak ties don't give you all of those things, but I think they give you three of them. And so it just, they actually do mean something, you know, it, it goes a long way in making you feel good um, and giving you that social connection. Um, and what she said, she was quoting somebody else, but she said, listen, nobody, nobody, not everybody waves, but everybody waves back. And you're the person who's waving first and we need those people was what she said. Um, so, and, oh, sorry, to finish that story about Nermeen, I just today, um, <laughs> uh, his friend Chime, they work together. I got this text earlier today that said, when it's cold and nothing to do with the market, this senior citizen reads this book. <laughs> Sorry, you're not gonna be able to, oh, yeah. be able to see it. Uh, it's the, it's Nermeen with my, with my book. And he sent actually a video of him like reading it and he'd like underline the part that he's in. It's so cute. Oh, that's fantastic. Anyway, so, <laughs> so it just takes, you know, it just, obviously not everybody's gonna write a book about it. So this adds another layer, but you know, the fact that it went from like a pleasant exchange and yeah. it just upgraded it, you know? It, it completely. Um, AJ, do you think that most people on the journey you took understood your direction? Well, as I said, you know, there were some people who were baffled, but yeah, the majority, and I do think it resonated. And um, just to tell a quick story, uh, uh, a lot of the, um, I get uh, not a lot, but but several classes, several teachers have assigned uh, oh, that's the, great. the book as as a project. So they would the kids would choose something that the, in their life, and then try to write. And uh, and the most heartwarming part for me was this one girl. Uh, she was I think she was a high schooler. Her favorite book was by John Green, um, the stars the what's it called it's big hit you know yeah uh, um you know. fault in your stars yeah, yeah. fault in your stars right thank you he's a super, oh, i love that from on high we got it yeah well so he is like a super as you might know super successful i knew him just a little because i knew him you know before he was uh super famous we both worked at the same magazine and uh so she had written a thank you note to his editor and to uh, the bookseller, uh, and she had written one to him, but, you know, he must get hundreds of letters, so he, he didn't respond, but I, um, so I was able to forward him uh, the note, and he didn't respond to me for a couple of weeks, but then he, he wrote the most, the loveliest four-page letter to this wow. girl about how much it meant to him to have her write this and how thankful he was for his editor because he wrote that in his first draft, um, he had the, the couple turn into a murderous, uh, they, they went after a, a oh. drug dealer to try to murder him. Oh. And, and the editor was like, this is a lovely book until they turn into vigilante murderers. What are you doing? So he totally changed it because of the editor. Um, and I forwarded it to the girl and she called me and she was 
weeping and shaking. She says, I'm shaking. I'm so, and so, you know, that was such the Menchie thing for John Green to do. He didn't have to do that. You know, he's millions of readers. Uh, but uh, I just love that because he, he really, you know, he was saying he's this super successful author and he is so thankful for these other people yeah. uh, like his editor who, who made the book what it was. Nothing that I often think about that, the idea of an author, you know, the author, yeah, does a lot for a book, but the editor should be on the cover, the designer, you know, there are all these people who make a book. Uh, I'm actually yeah. just start just launching this IGTV. I just started the first one about the acknowledgments page. So I'm oh. interviewing authors about their, I've, cause I always, do you always read it? I always read the acknowledgments page. Um, I do enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. I, there's like the inside baseball stuff, which is fine, but there's always, I feel like there's always these like little, you know, ups, these lines that just feel like I want to hear the story behind these, you know, <laughs> these little one-offs. It's true. I, yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, um, now that we've talked a little bit about young adult readers, let's talk about gratitude in children. Hmm. Jenna, would you mention that or talk a little yeah, bit about it? Yeah. So um, I involved my, my son is now eight, my son, Henry, at the time he was five. And I pulled him in a lot throughout the year. Um, and at a certain point, when I was writing, when I was writing the book, I interviewed this guy, Giacomo Bono, who was the co-author of Making Grateful Kids. And as I was explaining to him what I did with Henry over the year, because I was really seeing a lot of change, changes in Henry and a, like, I felt like he was really taking to, taking to it. You know, I feel like he started saying, I'm grateful for you. Like in sort of, instead of I love you or instead of a lot of other things, he would say that to people. Um, just for one example, but there were lots of, lots of things that I was seeing as, as I was involving him in the, in the project. And the, this co-author, this expert guy, um, he was saying, you know, there's this one, the connection you really need to help kids make is there are people behind the stuff you love. Like you love lots of stuff. There are people behind it. Like your whole thing, AJ, like you look around and you're like all this stuff that I'm surrounded by, like there are people that, you know, did it, you know, there are people that painted the wall next to me, you know, all that stuff, but kids need help knowing that they love the comic book. There's somebody who wrote the comic book. They love sushi. There's somebody who made this, you know, so, um, that, that was something that by the end of the year, him and even his little brother definitely understood that a little better. You know, we would, I mentioned sushi because I remember one day I took him to like a special birthday sushi lunch and he was like, this is so good. Where's the sushi chef? We need to thank him for her. Um, and you know, it's like, uh, it's not necessarily the way your, your brain works. It's, it's, you know, kids are sponges like anything else, like foreign languages, like anything else. They, they learn it, you know, they're, they're quick learners, but it is something that it's something that can be taught. Great. Yeah, I agree. It, um, AJ, tell us how your children reacted to the book. Well, it was my uh, one of my son's ideas in the first place because I was uh, I was trying to do this gratitude ritual before. I'm not very religious, but um, I thought I would say a sort of a secular version of a prayer before dinner. So uh, I would say, you know, I'd like to thank the grocery store worker who sold us this tomato and the farmer who grew the tomato for our spaghetti. And, and my son, who was, I think, 11 or 12 at the time, said, he called me out because he said, you know, that is, that's fine, but those people can't hear you. They're not here. So if you really meant it, you should go and thank him in person. And that's what I was like, that, that's a pretty interesting idea that could. And uh, so I, um, that's where it all began. And uh, I mean, they did want me to do candy or s'mores or chocolate. They were not happy about the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> it's not interesting to them. Although now one of them is a huge coffee fan, so. So after my first month, I turned to friends and I kind of expected it to be just as straightforward, you know, neighbors, I was writing, you know, thank you for this favor. And I started writing a list of friends and I'm like, thank you for, Ooh, I don't know. It just, 
it, I wasn't sure what I was going to say. Thank you for being a friend. Thank you for, to, to, uh, I don't know. It just, I wasn't, I wasn't sure how it was going to work. And then I remembered that a picture can be turned into a postcard. So I have all these shoe boxes full of old pictures and there are lots of duplicates and they're starting to, you know, yellow. And um, so I just reinforce those and turn them into postcards and send them to friends in California where I'm from and in Chicago and Seattle and um, various other places around the country. And just, um, you know, that became easier because there's something to say, you know, there's the picture to talk about and there's the gratitude for the years, you know, basically what I said to almost everybody was, you know, it's, I'm, I was just in a place where I was really, really busy with these little kids. Charlie wasn't, wasn't even two yet. Um, and it was, I was just thinking about how grateful I was for those times that we just had nothing we just had nothing but time to hang out and talk and have fun and eat good food and cook for each other. And um, I had all these pictures of those times that felt so far away <laughs> from my <laughs> life at the moment. And I was just so grateful for it. And it's like, I wanted to put a little bookmark in our relationship because I knew I wasn't, didn't have time for, I didn't have time for 31 two hour calls, you know, that I would love to do. Um, but I did have time to do this little art project and just remind these people that I loved them. Um, and that, you know, someday we'll, <laughs> someday we'll have time <laughs> again, maybe. That's great. They must have been thrilled when they received them. Yeah, um, I got a lot of sweet little selfies and stuff. Um, AJ, of all the people you interacted with, do you think there's someone who mostly got it? And if so, who is that person? You know, all the people you had to interview? Well, that's a good question. I, I don't know. Uh, it, it's hard to rank them, but I did definitely got, um, I feel that a lot of people were, uh, were touched by it. Uh, and even the barista um, who the, I go to this coffee shop in New York, Joe Coffee. And uh, so I think as Gina said, it's, I felt a little awkward, but I say, you know, I really want to thank you for this coffee. And then she thanked me for thanking her. And I was very tempted to <laughs> thank her for that. But that could be dangerous because that's an infinite loop. I could still be there now. Oh, there was uh, some like word for that. There's something like the Southern, I don't know. Oh, really? Yeah, there's like, yeah, it's something there's like, the southern, the southern loop the southern southern thank you note loop or something it's like oh that's, that's so kind thank you thank you <laughs> it is a danger it is a <laughs> danger overthinking um but yeah she i mean she told me that one of the worst parts of her job is that people don't even treat her like a human being they don't mm. look up on their phone and they just you know hand her their credit card without looking at her so even just looking someone in the eyes for two seconds uh like gina was saying the um it, it really does make a difference because we are as humans programmed for eye contact and and interaction and uh it can be very very uh alienating when uh when we just treat each other like machines this one is for both of you do you think the pandemic has made us more or less grateful what do you think? I, I mean, I'm hopeful that it did make us more grateful. I know that for me, at least, you know, some of the things that I totally took for granted, like, you know, just the, uh, whether it's, I actually don't like going to the barbershop, but I have friends who like going, you know, to the barbershop and, you know, just the, the fact that the, that the pandemic made that impossible it made all of these uh, little daily rituals that we're so used to and took for granted, it just highlighted how lucky we are to have them. Yeah, I mean, I think it made us a lot more aware of gratitude, right? Like all of a sudden everybody's thanking the healthcare workers, thanking mm -hmm. the essential workers, like gratitude became a, a thing that we thought about, I think more, even more. Um, I hope it made us all grateful. I don't know. I, I, sometimes I, I wonder, I don't know. 
I think it's something you have to work at. I don't think it's just a switch. You know, I don't, I, I think when we were really going through it and everybody was so grateful to that, all those people that were leaving their house when we were lucky enough to stay in or whatever it was, you know, there's a hope that somehow this is just like a, a, a sea change and people, your eyes are open and I don't know. <laughs> I don't think people really, I don't, I don't know that it, that it's that simple. Unfortunately, I think people get back into old habits and I think it's, I think it's very, like AJ was saying, I think it's very easy to focus on the thing that's going wrong in your day. It's like, there's probably like a good, you know, reason for that as far as, you know, I don't know, like if, if you're a caveman and there's like a bear fall, you know, like, it's like, right. it's probably good to like, to notice the thing that's wrong so you can fix it. But it's, um, but it's, it's, it takes some effort to stay in a grateful mindset um, it's not just something you could switch, switch on, you know? Do you think your books will change habits? And have you seen any evidence of that? Well, I have had some lovely feedback. I, I'm not sure it's going to uh, change the, the world, but it'll change a little corner. And um, yeah, you know, I've, uh, I love that all these schools have done projects based on it. And, uh, and it certainly changed me. It's made me, I mean, I'm still, I've still got the negative bias. I still got the Larry David side strong, but I, like Gina says, I fight it and it's a real practice. And, and uh, I work with my mom every day to, uh, to come up with something to be grateful for. So yeah, the, the experience certainly changed me. I can't really speak for, um, aside from the nice notes I've gotten, I can't oh, speak. That's, that's, that's good yeah. evidence. Yeah, it's yeah good. same. I've like, you know, I've gotten, it just, it feels like there's, um, every time I got a little letter or DM or whatever it is saying that somebody sent a letter to their mother's oncologist, um, I got that a little bit ago or, you know, whatever it is, you know, they read my book or they follow me on social media and they just said, okay, well, I think I'm just going to try this and send a letter to somebody, um, you know, and how it made them feel or how it made that person feel and the dialogue that followed, um, you know, it's these little, it's, it's little, um, but it's important. So I feel like it has changed things for, for some people, for some readers, which is, nice. I agree. I agree. Um, AJ, what did Joe, what did the Joe coffee company think of your project? Well, they were not opposed. <laughs> uh, I mean, at, at one point I considered doing um, Starbucks, but uh, I felt it was a little problematic just because, uh, you know, is Starbucks, I love Starbucks, but is it, you know, is it good for the world? It's forcing out all these independent coffee makers yeah. and, um, and, you know, they're able to buy in bulk. So are they paying enough to the farmers? Uh, I mean, it would have been nice if they had sold my book in every Starbucks in America. That would have been, but I decided, you know what? I'd rather go with something that's closer, something that I actually go to. Um, and yeah, Joe Coffee is great because it's an independent chain. It's got like, I don't know, 15 coffee shops. And, and they really think they were actually kind of doing a similar thing even before um, my project where they would have a little profile on the counter of the coffee grower of the day. And they would have yeah. a picture of someone in Kenya or in Colombia and talk about what, uh, what that person did and what their life was like. So yeah, I think that uh, I'm glad I went with them over Starbucks. Do they sell your book in the shop? They do, but they're only oh, 15 good. of them. So, <laughs> but they're very, yes, they're lovely and supportive. Joe Coffee, great coffee. Highly That's recommended. Great. It's in New York. Um, and uh, Jenna, how did, how did the teachers of your boys respond to this project? Um, the teachers of my boys. Um, or they, did they? I'm trying to remember now because when it came out, oh yeah, they, they responded great, but it was last year, it was COVID. They were like in this little, I found them this like little homeschool, I don't know. There were like eight, There it was like eight families, this little thing. So it wasn't normal school year when it came out. 
Um, but when you asked that question, I was thinking about, um, I talk about this in my, in the, in the uh, books chapter, but there was a librarian in Virginia, high school librarian who read about my project and started Thank You Thursdays based on it. And she was trying to tell me what it was, but it was like a little unclear. So I actually took my son and went down and, and visited and kind of saw what, what she was doing. So she's in a huge 4,000 person high school. And she started every Thursday, she sets up in the library um, a table full of thank you notes and little prompts and stuff. And kids come and eat their lunch there, or they like have a free period there and they would write any notes. And then the library staff would deliver them to the teacher's cubbies or to kids in their homeroom. Um, and, and also she was hosting classes that would come. So when I, I sat in on this class that had like a, you know, instead of going to their normal class that day, they went and did thank you notes all period, like a little, you know, just like a, for a little break. Um, and a lot of those, a lot of those students wrote to the teacher that had brought them in, Miss Golden, her name is, and she was like, turned out to be a really incredible teacher. Um, and she and I have like developed a little um, back and forth, but um, yeah, I, I hope I, my teacher, my son's teacher right now is going to start a little thank you project based on the book in his class. Um, yeah, I saw, I, it's one of my favorite parts of the book because talking to those kids, um, it was just really interesting because all of them at first were really skeptical, you know, like, no, no, no don't, don't make me what, like, um, and then when they just started writing one, they're like, oh, I get it. Okay. And then they were like off to the races and writing to each other and writing to, you know, um, I just, it was like this special thing where they um, kind of got, got it. Yeah. They're both such good books for, um, for children to use in classrooms. I think we could all use a little bit. Well, we're coming to the end of the hour. So before we go, let's talk about what you're both doing for the future. What are your projects coming up? AJ, why don't you send off that question? Sure, I am, uh, I've got another book coming out in, uh, in April. Uh, it's called The Puzzler. And it's about my obsession with puzzles of all kinds, crosswords, um, Wordle now, Spelling Bee, which I know Gina is, uh, She's a daily genius. You're talking to a genius. <laughs> uh, and but also jigsaw puzzles and uh, and ciphers and and sort of the big thesis is first of all I love puzzles and uh, they help get me through COVID, but uh, I also love them because they are all about curiosity and I think that's one of the great virtues of humankind alongside gratitude, gratitude and curiosity. So. Uh, uh, I one of the I, I heard a, a child psychologist once say, uh, when you're dealing with kids, don't get furious, get curious. Uh, oh. And I love that. And I think why just why why just kids? You know, deal with the world like that. Don't get furious, get curious. How can we solve it? What is going on? Why uh, do people believe that? And what can we do to change it? I love that. That sounds great. Sold. <laughs> Thanks, I'll pre-order it. Um, so I just launched this acknowledgments interview thing with authors on my Instagram, which I'm excited about. Um, I have a newsletter and I'm, I'm moving over to Substack next week and I'm including an option for subscribers where I'll basically take them through a thank you year where every, in the beginning of the month, I'll announce a new, like whatever the month's theme is. And I'll send little like, you know, the first February is going to be neighbors um, and I'll send tips and I'll send like a little downloadable, pretty little, you know, like printable thing where you can write the names of the people you want to thank and um, uh, ways to get your kids involved and stuff like that. And, um, and I'm trying to talk about gratitude to companies and schools and stuff like that. So I'm yeah. working on that too. Um, we have someone, Gail from Massachusetts, just said hi. 
And then there was a question, there was a question from Lori, but you've already answered it. It was about what, what is the new book you're working on? And we just got a thank you from Jennifer saying, thank you for reminding me to be grateful in my daily life. It was uplifting to hear your stories and perspectives. Well, so we thank, don't have I think that was from a friend of mine, Jen Fallon. So thank you, Jen. Oh, yep. who, nice. who actually, I think she was involved with the library because I spoke at the Darien Library like 10 years ago. Oh, interesting. I, I, so thank you, Jen, for bringing me up. Well, we are coming to the end. Let me show you these two books. And actually, I should show you, show you all the inside of, what are the pictures of the people? Do I have them? Is it in the back? In the middle. In the middle. Because that was, oh, here we go. This was kind of interesting because these were all the people that AJ went out and thanked, which when you look at the illustrations and read the titles, you'll realize he did wander far and wide to thank these people. But both of these books are well worth getting and they're at Barrett Bookstore. And I think they'll change the way you think. And I think um, a gratitude journal is a good way to start. And Following you two is a better way to start. So thank you so much this evening for joining us. I can't thank you enough. That's so nice. And I, I see a couple questions. Could I just answer the one? Oh, wait. Oh, sure. I don't see them. What, why don't you answer? We're in the Q&A little section. So there's two for yeah. me and one for you, AJ. Jeff, okay, Kelly. thank you. Um, okay. Did some of the thank you letter recipients that were squirmy get back in touch with you, Gina, i.e. the boss who let you go, the friend you lost touch with? Yeah, so... Um, the friend I lost touch with, I, she was actually generous enough to let me um, interview her for the book. Um, and it was such a special, like very vulnerable, honest conversation where um, I, and it's like, I, it's, I wish we would all, I wouldn't have had this conversation with her if I wasn't writing the book, you know? Um, but I wish, I wish we would have, I wish that would be more normal in friendship. Um, because I, you know, said, you know, it felt to me like you ditched me when I became a mom, like you just weren't interested, you know, like I, I got into it. Um, and she explained her, you know, perspective and what she was going through. And, um, you know, me sending that, that postcard to her really opened a door for us to repair our relationship. And we really did. We're really back to being friends, which, which is, um, which is a gift. Um, as far as the boss, that was, really, really good for me because I didn't thank her initially in my month, in my career mentors month, because I was laid off from food and wine as the travel editor, which was my dream job since I was 21. And I got it. It was amazing for three years. And then I was laid off. And of course, then, you know, everybody else was, so it's not <laughs> anything personal, but it was but it was personal at the time, you know, and I really, even though a few years had gone by, maybe three some odd years um, had gone by, I just, it still felt too raw. I just did not want to thank Dana, the editor-in-chief at the time, Dana Cowan. And then, you know, cut to a year later, I'm writing the book and we run into each other and I'm telling her about the book and the whole project. And she's immediately connecting me with people and she's so, such a cheerleader. Um, so I went home and I, that one, um, it's funny because I'm. It's connecting to this next question about not drafting out my letters, which I tried not to. But her, I wrote the few that were like <laughs> not. They're still in my drawer. I think it was just like they were mean. I don't know. And then I got to a place um, that was still really honest and saying like I did not. I wasn't ready to thank you. Like I, my feelings were still really hurt and. Um, but here's what I really am grateful for, you know, and it's really helpful for me to process that and close the door on that, you know, um, and she wrote back, I printed it in the, in the book, but she wrote back a really lovely response. And that was super flattering and made me uncomfortable even to print it, but just felt, you know, just felt reparative for me. Um, uh, and then so the second, the next question is you talk a lot about not really drafting out your letters, except for your mentor month. Did you find a few sentences versus a lengthy letter still made a big impact? I have a tendency to want to write a long thank you, but then there's the dread that it becomes a task. Yeah. So, um, my whole, my whole kind of theory, I think three or four sentences can make a big impact. Um, if this is a gratitude letter, I don't know, to like your dad, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's obviously different, different forms, right? 
Um, but mostly what, what I was talking about here is thanking some, somebody for something specific um, and being really heartfelt about it. Um, and that, that can make a big impact. It doesn't have to be a letter. It doesn't have to be a long letter. Um, I really believe that. I think four very heartfelt sentences can go a long way. Great. And, uh, AJ, can, yeah, can you I'd see love, your question? I can. Uh, okay. It's from Rebecca. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, AJ, you tend to portray yourself as more of a curmudgeon or cynic, but your books often show... Oh, it's oh, I'm st- oh, we lost it. Wait. <laughs> but I Click on the answered it. portion. There we go. Oh, you got it back? Yeah, let me just... Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I yeah, see. Click where, on the I see where it is under the answered. Okay, yep. there we but go. Your Sorry about that. Show the power of kindness and connection. Has your writing changed your own personal viewpoint about people in general, and or been helpful with your own life? Yes, is the answer. I mean, I uh, I am a strong believer in the idea of how the your behavior can shape your emotions, how how the outer can affect the inner. Uh, so forcing myself to write these thank you notes or thank people in person, after a while, it really does sink in. Uh, There's a great quote. I wish I had come up with it myself, but it's um, the founder of Habitat for Humanity says, uh, it's easier to act your way into a new way of thinking than to think your way into a new way of acting. So it's all about actions and, and, Mm -hmm forcing yourself to be grateful or acting as if you're compassionate and eventually your mind catches up. And this is one of the bases of, um, uh, uh, of cognitive behavioral therapy, which I'm a big fan of. So, uh, so anyway, uh, yes, thank you, Rebecca. It has helped. I'm still got the strong curmudgeon side, but I'm, I'm definitely, um, I fight it and, uh, and these books and projects help me. Well, thank you both. This has been a great presentation. Let me hold up your books again because I can't think of a better thing to do than start your weekend off with one or both of these. And thank you for sharing your time with us and telling us this incredible story of both of your books. Well, thank you. And by the way, I just saw Nancy Sheed. Hello, Nancy. Thank you for all your advice. She's a very brilliant uh, publishing marketing uh, mind. So Oh, great. Great. but thank you, uh, Kathleen. Thank you, Gina. And thank you, Thank Jerry. you, AJ. Thank Thanks, you, everyone. Stay warm and have so a great lovely. weekend. Bye, everyone. Thanks so much for stopping by. Bye. Thank you again.